About a week ago, Hulk Hogan <laughs> uh, gave an interview to Muscle and Health from about a week or so ago. Now, right, so using your fingers and maybe your toes as well, I'm going to read out these few paragraphs, uh, quotes that he gave to that magazine or website, whatever, and you tell me how many lies you think you hear in it. I've counted, I've counted them as best I can. Lives, uh, lies or very likely tall tales. So I'm going to read it to you. Simon Cowell came to help with the wrestling album. I was in Wembley Stadium. I saw a lot of Make-A-Wish kids. It was me, Michael Jackson, Mr. T. It was all the Make-A-Wish kids during the 80s and 90s. I had a kid there that was in rough shape. The EMTs were with him and he was on the stretcher and you know his body odour and stuff. It had a smell to it that I hadn't smelled in a while. Not bad, but it was just a different type of smell. I really wasn't sure where, uh, what it was and the parents were freaking out. The parents were Hulkamaniacs. I told the doctors and EMTs... I was, I was just looking at you when I said that. You know that the kid is in kind of trouble here, you know. Look at, me, look at my face, I'm going. <laughs> yeah, in fact, in fact, I'm going to put the camera on you. Um, <laughs> so, so let me say my goodbyes and give him a hug and a kiss. I got a nice place for him out at ringside at Wembley Stadium and it was all roped off. So I went to wrestle and I kept looking and I kept looking and the kid wasn't there. So when I came back from wrestling, I was the last person to wrestle in the main event. I said, what happened to the family out there? They said the kid passed away. So when I found out the kid passed away, my manager, Jimmy Hart, the Mouse of the South, who used to be in a band too, he had a couple of number one hit songs here in the, uh, in the States, and I played music before, so we stayed up all night and we wrote 12 songs for the kid's family. I didn't know anybody in the UK, and Jimmy knew somebody from Select Records, and they got a hold of Simon Cowell. He produced a little album for us, and it went to number one on the Billboard charts for eight weeks, and we donated the money to the family. Then Simon came back to me and said, we need to do a song with a band called Green, uh, with a band called Green Jelly over in the UK, something called Leader of the Gang, a Gary Glitter song. I should point out at this point that Gary Glitter is one of the most world's most renowned paedophiles. Uh, so that did really well on Billboard too. I came back to the States. I had a crazy idea since I was wrestling. Maybe we should do music here. So I grabbed Cindy Lauper and Rick Derringer and a bunch of people and we recut a bunch of songs, Land of a Thousand Dancers and stuff. And Simon Cowell came over and helped produce the wrestling album. Then he came and produced the second wrestling album, Pile Driver, and he never left. He stayed here and he became this monster producer and the nicest guy in the world. So he's also claiming that he brought Simon Cowell over to the United States. Thank you very much, Hulk. So, of that story, what did you think was true? I think very little of it, day the truth. Mm -hmm. I think is... I mean, the, you, you're reading that, and he's all over the place. I don't even know what he's talking about it. He was talking about Jimmy Hart's musical career and make a wish kids and dropping names like a like a son of a I don't know. I mean, when you're reading that, I'm going, damn, he did all this. So how many lies are in there? I counted 17. Now, okay, let me let me say if if I'm sitting in a car with Hulk. And he's telling me all this. Listen, I've heard so much bullshit in the wrestling business. <laughs> then eventually, it just when they're hitting you with it, it just rolling off, rolling off, rolling off. You know, I'm not going to say, "Hey, didn't you do this?" But I don't, I don't know. What, so, okay, what is it with Hulk? All right, before I go through every single lie or tall tale in this, are you saying? We, wait a minute, are you saying the Hulk will tell you a lie? I'm saying he's telling me 17 lies in this particular few paragraphs okay. amazingly what is it with hulk hogan and just doesn't he have an interesting enough life that he doesn't have to embellish to this level i don't get it you know there's a lot of things i don't get about wrestling this is one of them so i mean wouldn't he have another enough stuff to tell that actually happened mm -hmm. without having to make stuff up there's so many do you know once or he claimed or wait a minute or does he really believe this? Well, you think he's worked hmm. himself into a shoot, as they say. <laughs> Maybe. But, I, I, you know, you talk to some guys and they're not there. They're seriously not there anymore. I think Hulk, I hope he is, because I always liked him. 
But see, sometimes you have to accept people for what they present to you. And I present he was he's Hulk. So whatever he says, yeah, whatever. And just go with it. So, but if he's trying to give this to a reporter that wants to fact check the stuff, then they could really embarrass him. Yeah, but there's so many there's so many things he says that are just really easily verifiable. Like one time he said that when he slammed Andre the Giant at WrestleMania three, that was his last match, and he died six days later. It's like he he lived <laughs> six years. You rest. <laughs> no, he did not he did. say that. He said you rest. He wrestled in the next WrestleMania a year later. He just he just comes and he up. says when he slammed him. Andre died six days later. Yeah, he was six tons by that point because Andre started at 500 pounds at the start of the story. And then we're getting into metric yeah, tons by gained, the end of it. Yeah, he probably gained 100 pounds during the match. <laughs> and that's hard to do. But Wait, I, I, have to, I have to go through this paragraph. So, Okay, go ahead. How, how many lies did you count that you thought that's not true? Because I've already told you I've counted 17, but when I read it to you, how many did you think? Nah, probably not. Well, I, I would say at least 10. Okay. so And I forgot, I've forgotten them, but I'm, I'm just throwing that number out there just as a ballpark figure. Simon Cowell came to help with the wrestling album. Uh, he did produce the 1993 uh, WrestleMania album as an executive producer, but Stock and Waterman oversaw the project. Hogan did not feature at all on this album, so I don't know where Hogan's story comes in with this. So Hogan then says, I was at Rem Wembley Stadium. No, he wasn't. Uh, it was me, Michael okay, Jackson. Okay, now with WWE or ELF, yep. they've only been to Wembley Stadium once, yes. correct? Yes. And Hook wasn't on that card. He was nowhere that near was summer, that card. That was, some, that was SummerSlam, right? Yep. Okay. He was nowhere Go near ahead. that card. Uh, so it was me and Michael Jackson. Now, someone on Reddit very nicely did research and found that Michael Jackson was in Germany at the time during the Dangerous Tour, so he was not at Wembley Stadium. Mr. T was also there, highly unlikely. Why would Mr. T be there in 92? But anyway. And then it was all the Make-A-Wish kids during the 80s and 90s. So every Make-A-Wish kid from the 80s and 90s was at Wembley Stadium that day. Um, the next one I've written is, uh, he claimed that uh, the dying child's parents were Hulkamaniacs. Uh, we don't know that. That doesn't, that doesn't even fit. <laughs> no, he just, the story. he just threw that in. Now, don't you, don't you know, yeah, the, the kid from the time they had him in the back, he was that close to death. And by the time they going to bring him out there, which they never did, according to Hulk, mm -hmm. he had passed away. Now, that's – even I got to throw the flag on that one. And I don't even know what he's talking about. I'm glad you mentioned that because he says, I got a nice place for this sick kid out at ringside at Wembley Stadium, and it was all roped off. So he also mentioned previously that he was on a stretcher. I mean, he's going to be in an iron lung in the next retelling of this story. I've never, I've never heard or seen – a space that big left out for an iron lung or similar at ringside yes. for a make a wish kid. So I'm, I, I'll am i use your line there, throw the flag on that. Then he says, so I went to wrestle, which he didn't because he wasn't on the card and he wasn't at the show. And then he goes back to the back and he apparently was looking out for this kid in front row. And then uh, he was like, where's the kid? And then he said, oh, the kid died. So like in the space of like an hour, yeah. So this kid was at death's door okay. for like an hour. Did he supposed to have worked on the show? He's claiming Russell. he was in the main event of Wembley SummerSlam 1992 in this. Yeah. Uh, well, that didn't happen. I know that. Oh, no, no, that definitely didn't happen. Um, let me just have a look. He claims that Jimmy Hart, uh, Jimmy, Hart, Jimmy Hart had a number one hit, or a couple of number one hit songs in the States, which is untrue. Keep on Dancing got to number four, although the Gentries did have a few top 40 hits. Um, then he claims that he and Jimmy Hart stayed up all night writing songs for the kids' family. That's it. I have never heard that before. And they wrote 12 songs in 12 hours. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming they, at 12 o'clock at night to noon the next day. Hulkster in Heaven oh. was one of them. I mean, if you heard that song, you could believe Hulkster. he wrote it in that five minutes. <laughs> Huckster in heaven. Yeah. It's like you might you might as well just push dog shit in your ears. 
for, it's just awful. I mean, that as a tribute, that's more like a slap in the face to the dead kids' parents. Wait a minute. So there is a song called Huckster in yes, Heaven? Yes, there is. Yes. No, there's not. We can't play it, but there is. Why can't we play it? Because it is copyright. Copy, yes, yeah, copyright. Yeah. Oh, where would people, the people that are listening, hey, fans, I got you in mind. I want you to hear this song, Huckster in Heaven. Where would they find that? Oh, just get it on YouTube. It's right there. Huckster in Heaven. You got to listen to it. Yeah. The audible- I mean, you learn, folks, you learn stuff here that you won't hear on any other bullshit podcast. So, but I, I'm, hey, as soon as we finish here, I'm right to Google. <laughs> And I'm going to hear Hoekster in Heaven. Yeah. I mean, as I say, it's less how of a far tribute. Did, how, how far did that go up the top 100 charts? Uh, well, I'm glad you mentioned that because let me just have a look. <laughs> uh, he produced it. Uh, so, uh, doesn't say the song, but he claims that Simon Cowell produced his album. Now, keep in mind that he's talking about the 1992 time frame. This album came out, actually did come out in 1995 when he was in WCW. I don't think Simon Cowell produced it. I don't think anyway. Uh, he also claims that the album went to number one on Billboard for eight weeks, which it didn't. It didn't yeah. go there for one week. And uh, apparently he may have done all right on a kid's Billboard uh, uh, album thing. Uh, we donated the money to the family. So we don't know I doubt that. that. I, I doubt that. Yeah, it just said, well, the wrestling album's proceeds came out in 1993. It was a WWF album with no mm-hmm. input from the Hulkster. And those proceeds definitely didn't go. I don't know if the 1995 Hulk Hogan uh, album did. And what have we got else? Uh, Yes, Hulk Hogan did, in fact, and I've totally forgotten about this, do a cover of Gary Glitter's Leader of the Gang that reached, in 1993, number 25 on the UK charts. Okay, Gary Glitter, I recognize the name. What big hit did he have? It, it was that. He had a few, like Rock and Roll Part 2, Leader of the Gang. And then the Gary Glitter story is he was found out that he was a raging old pedo because in back in 1997, when people didn't know that much about computers, he took his computer to be repaired at a local branch of PC World. And, and because it was Gary Glitter, all the staff looked through his hard drive and found thousands of indecent images. And that's how he ended up getting caught. So mm. that really is his lasting legacy. Uh, anyway, is he still is he still living? Sadly, he is. Yes. In fact, I think he's at large at the moment. He was recently released from prison. Mm. Paul Gad is his real now, name. Now, Gary Glitter that that would be a name most of the people I would think uh, wouldn't be they wouldn't they wouldn't know him. Mm. I knew him because of that one big hit, Gary Glitter. Yeah. Pretty good, good song for the times, but. But he was a pedophile. Oh, yeah. A committed. A raging pedophile. Raging pe- pedophile, yes. And he's not just a pedophile. No, no, no. He's no. a he's raging. In. He's a raging pedophile. He's bought into oh, the ideolo- ideology of pedophilia. So he is. And uh, probably still is as well. Uh, anyway, uh, we have three more lies here. Uh he then claims that Cindy, he grabbed Cindy Lauper and Rick Derringer to make uh, a bunch of songs and help produce the wrestling album. Simon Cowell helped produce the wrestling album. He's conflating this with seven years earlier with the wrestling album, uh, which came out in 1985, and Simon Cowell was nowhere near that. And then he also says uh, that uh, Simon Cowell dealt with Pile Driver, which is the follow-up to the wrestling album which came out in 1987, five years before all this should have happened. And then he also claims that he brought Simon Cowell to America. 17. Dubious, dubious uh, tales or, outli- or outli- outright lies. Well, it doesn't surprise me. But see, I would I would have never. See, folks, this is why I have James here. He will check the, the facts on stuff. I would have never checked. If he just, like I said before, if I'd been sitting in the car and we'd going down the road, and, let me tell you, brother, you know about Gary Glitter. <laughs> I would just take. I would actually the conversation would have started in the car, and I would have left it in the car. I wouldn't have got out of the car and I said, or told anybody, "Hey, Hook told me he did this with Gary Glitter." Because he, he would go in one ear of my head and out the other one. So. But see, in the wrestling business, you get used to that. 
You cannot li- you have to naturally assume anything anybody tells you. Well, not anybody, but guys like Hulk, and I like Hulk, but whatever he tells you, that is kind of bullshit to begin with. So never get out and quote what Hulk says because, you know, chances are that most of it is just made up. Funny. So he t- he told a story about his wife, uh, a, a guy's wife, Bubba the Love Sponge, oh, yeah. that his wife wanted to go to bed with Hulk, and they did. Then they taped it, and then um, Bubba turned it back on him. Uh, what a messed up deal they had. Did you read that? You ever read the deal? I've watched a documentary on it. It was a terrible documentary as well. But uh, yeah, the Gorka trial, very interesting. Yeah. Because it had wider implications on journalism as well. Mm hmm. Well, let me. Bubba, he made Bubba, really. Bubba, I guess, was a, a shock jock back in those days. Shit jock. In, Awful. It... Were you there when Awesome Kong slapped the crap out of him? No, I heard about it. Oh. Awesome Kong should have slapped the crap out of him. Oh. You know, she's making a comeback. She's making she a... She is, yeah. She's on a with TNA, and I'm glad for her because she's the one who really turned women's wrestling around. Dutch, I, I hate to do this to you because normally I know this is more of a rambling thing. We are going to talk about that next week or the week after when they have the match. Okay. We, we, we'll leave Awesome Kong there because Gail Kim is returning as well. But we will leave that. I, I want to mention one more thing about this and then we're going to have to move on. On Theo Von's podcast very recently, Hulk Hogan then refutes his own horseshit claims about being there at Wembley with Michael Jackson because he says, and this is quote, The only time I've met Michael Jackson was when they made us move down the bus and, got, and get out of the way. I don't think they, they want us to look at him or anything, but he came down and apologised. So apparently the only time he's ever actually seen Michael Jackson was he shared a bus with him once. I don't get it. Well, they ask him to move? Yeah, security. On, on a bus? Yeah, apparently security bus? asked Hulk Hogan and his family to shift over so Michael Jackson could walk past. What kind of bus? Uh, a big one. Must have been. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> well, anyway. All right. Let's... It's Hulk, so take it, take it for what it's worth. Uh, All right, Hulk. I think we've had enough of you. 